So we'll start again, all right? Um, so until now, we have covered the first part as to how to get started and how to build your building. What we are left with is to how to do the analysis in SAP, the different analysis. But before I go to SAP, I would like to just give a very brief presentation about the different methods of analysis that can be applied, that we usually apply. Okay. Um, it won't be very complicated, it's just brief overview. So, you know that usually we have linear and we have non-linear method. In the linear method, we have three different methods, okay? And linear, linear method usually can be applied to dissipative and non-dissipative structure. For the dissipative structures, the non-linearity non is taken into account using the, the, the factor Q. In the non-linear analysis, non-linearity is taken through plastic hinge, which we are going to tell how to define and stuff. So we have three methods, the time history analysis, which we rarely use in the linear method. I will tell you why. And model response spectrum analysis, which you probably all of you know, and equivalent lateral force analysis. As input, the first one, time history analysis, needs accelerogram. The input of the second method, model response spectrum analysis, we need to do model analysis in which we'll use the response spectrum. While for the third method, we will need response spectrum. We don't need to do model analysis in the equivalent lateral force analysis, guys. Why? Because we assume or we use a simplified formula to compute the natural frequency of the structure. That's why it's simplified and it's usually done manually. And for the nonlinear analysis, we have nonlinear time history analysis, which we are not, we are not going to cover in this uh, lesson. And the last one, push over analysis. So in SAP, we'll just perform the second method, third method, and fifth method. The first two are linear, and the last one is nonlinear. Also, for the push offer, we'll need the response spectrum. We'll use it. And the method is called capacity spectrum method. Using this method, we can define the performance point of the structure. The performance point is the displacement and the accelerate, acceleration of the structure that we obtain if we, um, if we have a certain earthquake magnitude. Okay, this is the performance point and this is what we get from the last method. So I will go um, just like, I will give overview for each of the methods that I've just introduced. So we start with the linear uh, time history analysis. Here's just uh, what I have already said about Q, about uh, plastic hinges. All right, for the first method, the problem is that it is necessary that the, the structure must be non-dissipative because there is no way to uh, assign, to uh, account for the non-linearity. There is no place to insert Q. And since the method is linear, we cannot assign plastic hinges. So the structure must be non-dissipative. That's why we don't use it, because we rarely have non-dissipative structure. Not covered in this lesson, we will not say, we will not, we will not explain how to do that method, okay? Method two, you know it, model response spectrum analysis, we have different steps. We perform the model analysis, we find the period, and then we continue, we find the acceleration, and so on. And then we find the model, ma uh, the model uh, the mass participation. It should be more than 85% according to the Italian code, and it should be more than 90% according to Euro code. Euro code is more demanding. Okay, so you know how to do that. I I've just wrote, uh, I've just written the steps down. This is the second method, linear. Okay, and the third method is also you know it. This is one we usually do manually because it's very simplified. It is conservative. It gives higher value than, than in the re reality. But this is the only way we can do in order to simplify things. If you don't have the software, you apply this one. The idea is to find the forces at each story. You apply them, and then you find, you calculate 
stresses. Okay, and uh, here we say that T1, the period of the structure, is computed using an approximated way, using this formula. Here there's something important. A T is dependent on C, which is the type of the building, and also H, which is the height of the building. Now, in our model, we have two directions, and each direction has different stiffness, right? Because we have different dimensions. Now, using this method, because dimension of the plan and also stiffness is not taken into account, only the height. So we'll have the same period in both directions. Tx and Ty will be equal in our building, but in reality, they are not. So this is how to compute T to proceed and uh, compute the forces at each story using this formula. SD is the design spectrum. You can get from the, the spectrum that you have, either SLD or SLV, according to whatever limit you are referring to now. Okay, depend on your design. But usually we use both. So we find for each limit state, we do this method. And then forces are, are distributed along the height of the building using this uh, formula. Because here in this formula, we find the base shear and we use the base shear to distribute forces along the building. I assume you already know that. Okay, and the forces are applied at the center of mass. But are you sure of the center of mass, of the location of the center of mass? Usually there is uncertainty with the center of mass. Sometimes it, 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 it's shifted due to several factors, um, such as um, spatial variation of seismic motion or uncertainty in the position of the center of mass, okay, or, or different things. So this uncertainty is accounted for using this formula. So we assume, we assume that there is eccentricity. We are not sure about center of mass, we assume eccentricity of 0 0.05 times the length in this direction. But before I continue, uh, here uh, the period should be less than these two values. You have to check that. If it's higher than that, you take the minimum, okay? So, we have eccentricity. If we have force and we have eccentricity, what happens? All right, we will have moment. And here's the moment. So instead of having force, now we have a couple, force and moment. We have two ways. The first way is to apply the force directly on the eccentricity, and the moment will be computed directly by, by the software. But we, should, we usually, we don't do that. We usually um, uh, uh, apply the force at the uh, center of gravity, uh, of mass, and also apply the moment that is equal to eccentricity times force. This is more organized. This will help you in um, finding the different cases more easily. Okay. Now here's just overview about the combination. We have combination. The first one is where the X, EX, the earthquake, forces in the x direction is primary, here y is primary, here z is primary, and you have to combine with other direction uh, by adding only 30%, okay? But here we include also z. In this slide, we are, we are uh, saying when to include the, the, the direction. These are the criteria. However, in our model, since we have regular building, we don't need the direction. So we only include x and y, okay? So here is the new, the new uh, formula, the two new formula. Here is x main, here is y main. In this example, just to simplify, we will refer only to x direction. So we'll not talk about y direction, okay? However, the y direction, the y, uh, the earthquake and the y direction will be combined with x. So here, x is uh, primary. We will have 16 different combinations if you consider all the cases of Fx, Fy, and X, My. 16 different combinations by changing only the sign of the value. However, if you take a closer look, you will see that the second combination, we have minus 0.3 and Mx is 1. You know, M moment is always around the Z axis. What does it mean? It means that the moment are summed up. So 1 minus 0 0.3 will have 0 0.7. So it's not critical, right? Whether the first one is 1 plus 0 0.3, it's 1.3. But we don't need to include the second one because it's 0 0.7. We know it's not critical. So we just eliminate it. All green combinations can be eliminated in this way. So 
what we are left with is a combination, the black one. Okay, so for one direction, we have a combination. And for the other direction, direction we will have another a. But let's stick with one direction, a combination. But those a combinations are only for one limited state. Let's say in this, in this example, in sample, we'll consider only SLD. Okay, damage. All right, so eight combinations. We carry on and here how to compute, how to combine because earthquake forces are combined with vertical forces. We don't, we don't uh, apply them at all uh, with this formula. Okay, uh, there, there are the tables that I showed you and then you can find the coefficient and then combine. And here's the definition of mass because SAP need, uh, need to, 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 to have the masses in order to compute the uh, mass made matrix. We can see that they are very close to each other, but you know this this coefficient is different. And you can have e, uh, epsilon e y equal phi times epsilon two i, which is this one. But you can see uh, look, have a look there. Okay, this is a combination. Here are stable nonlinear methods. As I said, nonlinear time history analysis. This is the fourth method. We will not cover it here because we don't have time. Uh, it, it relies on accelerograms and it, it does the integration inside the software. It takes a lot of time if you have a huge project. So it's used for research, not in practical field work. Okay, but it, ha it, it gives very exact value. And the pushover analysis, the output will be something like that, base shear and lateral deformation. And we will have the deformation curve. All right, guys, this is what we will have from this uh, so we push, we apply force, and we measure results. We, we, we increase the force and we measure the result. Of course, when you define plastic hinges, then damage will occur throughout the analysis. And you will see the slope will change. And according to your code, we, well, we can, you can define different load shapes because the force that you will push the building can be uniform can be rectangular. According to your code, they say that we have to apply two. The one is the uniform, the second is triangular, and you take the critical. 